Hello and welcome to Better Body Movement. This class is designed to help you start feeling well. I have less pain, truly, literally eliminate that pain. I just feel better. I can tell that my posture is changing. Bright light in the day when we've done our workouts online. Makes me feel so good about myself. The head, neck, and shoulders are intricately connected by several different muscles. The most superficial muscles being the upper trap, middle trap, and levator scapula. The brain communicates with these muscles through the 11th cranial nerve and the nerves at C3 and C4. These muscles contract the shoulder towards the neck, which causes pressure on the upper part of the vertebrae, creating tension and pain. The muscles that are much deeper are the transversal spinalis and splenius capitis. The nerves that innervate these muscles are found from the C1 through the C6. These muscles connect the head and neck, which means looking down, like reading, computer work, or especially phone or tablet work, can cause problems. Start in a side-lying position with a foam roller between the neck and shoulder. Use your top leg to press into the floor, rolling your body up which will create pressure downward through that shoulder. You're trying to create as much movement between the ear and shoulder as possible while relaxing the head toward the floor. You may increase the intensity of work by rolling the foam roller up and down using your hand. To work different points of the neck, simply roll backwards, keeping the chin and chest directly in line while opening the shoulders to the ceiling. An additional way to create greater intensity is by creating a saw-like motion, pulling the end of the foam roller toward your neck and then relaxing. You need to allow yourself to relax during the saw-like motion to break down the muscle tissue in the upper trap and neck. Continue to change the position, working the areas that are most tender. If you are tensing your body, it is not helping. My recommendation is to continue this work anywhere from two to three minutes on each side before moving on. A common headache that comes through my door is when someone comes in and paints across the forehead the pain that they feel. Commonly, it's also associated to have eye pain with this sort of headache. The muscles typically causing this headache are actually on the back side of the head and they are called the occipital muscles. When the occipitals get extremely tight, they pull on the back of the head over the top of the head, creating the tension and pressure you feel in the forehead. So let's take a look at how to release these muscles to get rid of your headache. Using two lacrosse balls directly on the back of the head and lying on the ground, use a book to elevate the lacrosse balls. You're going to press down into the lacrosse balls and move them around the back of your head until you find the part that is most tender. At this point, you're going to begin pressing your head down into the lacrosse ball as hard as you can tolerate. This pressure should recreate the headache that you commonly feel across your forehead. Continue this pressure for 30 seconds. I will continue to talk you through the 30 seconds here. Do not let up on your pressure. Continue to push as hard as you possibly can in the occipital muscles in the back of your head. Try even increasing the tension and feel the headache. You know you're doing it correctly if you continue to feel the headache the whole time you're on these muscles. And we finish in three, two, one. Wonderful, now we're done with the occipital release. Next, we're going to be working on the atlanoaxial junction and the rest of the cervicals. The first muscles for us to focus on are at the atlantoaxial junction, and they are called the obliquus capitis major, obliquus capitis superior and inferior, and the rectus capitis posterior minor. Once we have worked through those, we will work on the rotatories and the semispinalis cervices. Laying on your back with a book under your head and neck, place the lacrosse balls directly in line with the junction of the head and neck. Once you have the lacrosse balls in that position, tilt the head up and down like you're nodding your head yes. This should cause a contraction of the muscle tissue on top of the lacrosse ball and then a stretch as you look down. Once you've completed the work on that junction, move down a half an inch to the next cervical and continue this process until you have worked your way down the entire neck. Be sure to get a tight contraction tucking the chin, followed by a strong contraction tilting the head back in order for this technique to work.
If you get to a point where it feels like one side is worse than the other, you may rotate your head to that side and continue to nod yes. For example, if I had some extra tension on the left side of my neck, I would rotate my head to the left and continue to contract up and down. Remember to do this continuously through the entire neck, rotating to the left or right as needed. Our final release is going to be on the upper and middle trap and levator scapula. These muscles contract the shoulder to the head. This release requires a massage stick and a clear wall. We want to start by locating the trap and levator, which holds the shoulder up to the ear. Once located, lean against the wall, allowing the stick to press down into the shoulder. Once you've created that pressure, you can start turning your head down and away from that trap. You'll notice I continue to hold the massage stick with my right hand and let the massage stick push my left shoulder down. Continue to create this pressure until your shoulder feels relaxed. The head, neck, and shoulders are intricately connected by several different muscles. The most superficial muscles being the upper trap, middle trap, and levator scapula. The brain communicates with these muscles through the 11th cranial nerve and the nerves at C3 and C4. These muscles contract the shoulder towards the neck, which causes pressure on the upper part of the vertebrae, creating tension and pain. The muscles that are much deeper are the transversal spinalis and splenius capitis. The nerves that innervate these muscles are found from the C1 through the C6. These muscles connect the head and neck, which means looking down, like reading, computer work, or especially phone or tablet work, can cause problems. Start in a side-lying position with a foam roller between the neck and shoulder. Use your top leg to press into the floor, rolling your body up, which will create pressure downward through that shoulder. You're trying to create as much movement between the ear and shoulder as possible while relaxing the head toward the floor. You may increase the intensity of work by rolling the foam roller up and down using your hand. To work different points of the neck, simply roll backwards keeping the chin and chest directly in line while opening the shoulders to the ceiling. An additional way to create greater intensity is by creating a saw-like motion, pulling the end of the foam roller toward your neck and then relaxing. You need to allow yourself to relax during the saw-like motion to break down the muscle tissue in the upper trap and neck. Continue to change the position, working the areas that are most tender. If you are tensing your body, it is not helping. My recommendation is to continue this work anywhere from two to three minutes on each side before moving on. A common headache that comes through my door is when someone comes in and paints across the forehead the pain that they feel. Commonly, it's also associated to have eye pain with this sort of headache. The muscles typically causing this headache are actually on the back side of the head and they are called the occipital muscles. When the occipitals get extremely tight, they pull on the back of the head, over the top of the head, creating the tension and pressure you feel in the forehead. So let's take a look at how to release these muscles to get rid of your headache. Using two lacrosse balls directly on the back of the head and lying on the ground, use a book to elevate the lacrosse balls. You're going to press down into the lacrosse balls and move them around the back of your head until you find the part that is most tender. At this point, you're going to begin pressing your head down into the lacrosse ball as hard as you can tolerate. This pressure should recreate the headache that you commonly feel across your forehead. Continue this pressure for 30 seconds. I will continue to talk you through the 30 seconds here. Do not let up on your pressure. Continue to push as hard as you possibly can in the occipital muscles in the back of your head. Try even increasing the tension and feel the headache. You know you're doing it correctly if you continue to feel the headache the whole time you're on these muscles. And we finish in three, two, one. Wonderful, now we're done with the occipital release. Next, we're going to be working on the atlanoaxial junction and the rest of the cervicals. The first muscles for us to focus on are at the atlantoaxial junction, and they are called the obliquus capitis major, obliquus capitis superior and inferior, 
and the rectus capitis posterior minor. Once we have worked through those, we will work on the rotatories and the semispinalis cervices. Laying on your back with a book under your head and neck, place the lacrosse balls directly in line with the junction of the head and neck. Once you have the lacrosse balls in that position, tilt the head up and down like you're nodding your head yes. This should cause a contraction of the muscle tissue on top of the lacrosse ball and then a stretch as you look down. Once you've completed the work on that junction, move down a half an inch to the next cervical and continue this process until you have worked your way down the entire neck. Be sure to get a tight contraction tucking the chin, followed by a strong contraction tilting the head back in order for this technique to work. If you get to a point where it feels like one side is worse than the other, you may rotate your head to that side and continue to nod yes. For example, if I had some extra tension on the left side of my neck, I would rotate my head to the left and continue to contract up and down. Remember to do this continuously through the entire neck, rotating to the left or right as needed. Our final release is going to be on the upper and middle trap and levator scapula. These muscles contract the shoulder to the head. This release requires a massage stick and a clear wall. We want to start by locating the trap and levator, which holds the shoulder up to the ear. Once located, lean against the wall, allowing the stick to press down into the shoulder. Once you've created that pressure, you can start turning your head down and away from that trap. You'll notice I continue to hold the massage stick with my right hand and let the massage stick push my left shoulder down. Continue to create this pressure until your shoulder feels relaxed. Yeah. All right, a little bit of a change. Uh, I'm going to be doing leg day with you guys today. Uh, Noah, I'm going to have uh, working on the computer, so I just wanted to make that known up front and right away because uh, we got to catch up on a few things as far as our posts. We have different things that we're doing. Uh, if you noticed, we actually... Uh, made an event on Facebook with the link to the YouTube channel that you could join in right at nine o'clock. So we're working on our systems to make this really easy for you guys to access. So whether you're a Facebook user or a YouTube user, it should be available to you really simply, okay? Uh, first things first, as always with our YouTube channel, your support is what keeps us running. So subscribe to my YouTube channel for Better Body Movement and then also uh, like the videos. The more that you guys do that, the easier it is for us to provide these videos to you free of charge and that's what we want is to be able to provide this free of charge so that way anyone in the world can see the benefit uh, of having better body movement in their lives okay uh, so that's all done let's go into our I dedicates uh, today Lori's mom uh, continuing to pray for her because she's doing dialysis three times a week that I I feel like it's so easy to just get in the repetition of saying it that is a huge deal right like Going to the appointments every single, you know, three times a week, getting in, doing all those different things. Like, that's a lot uh, to have to go through. So, um, you know, praying for them uh, through that as they go, okay? Uh, Ethan, with his stage four liver and bile duct cancer, uh, just right now, as far as I know, he's getting as much as he can out of life with his wife and his kids. Um, so it, that's just kind of a difficult thing knowing uh, you're going through it. Uh, thankfully, he does not have a lot for pain, so that's really a good deal there. Uh, my friend's wife, who was diagnosed with breast cancer, and they are treating that naturally, as far as I know, it's going well. Uh, Sky, continue to pray for her, uh, just her anxiety and all of the pressure that is on her going through these treatments. So with bone marrow transplant, um, and then all the side effects from the medications that she's taking, anti-rejection meds she was on, and then also the antibacterial, antibiotics, um, multiple different kinds, just trying to kill off anything that might potentially get her sick because her immune system is so, so weak. Uh, so be praying for her through that. And then we're still praying for Erin with her foot and ankle. Uh, did get an update from Lois the other day. Uh, much better. It's it's kind of oozing. They said that, that should be happening, so they're still cleaning the wound, making sure it goes. So please, please pray against uh, bacterial infection uh, in 
her ankle, okay? Remember, if you have any eye dedicates you want someone put on our board, uh, you want us to pray for them, we absolutely would love, love, love to do that uh, for them. So please let me know. Leave a comment in our comment section of those you would like to dedicate, maybe what's going on in a short little uh, phrase. Or it could be as much as, my friend uh, needs prayer, right? If you don't want to be specific, that's fine. But we can pray and dedicate our intention to that individual, right? That's the act of prayer, right? Uh, the act of prayer, inspired action dedicated to an intention greater than yourself, right? So our workout time here is not only about us, it's about everyone else that we can be praying for and dedicating this time to those individuals, okay? Um, awesome verse of the day. This is one of my favorites. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. By testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12, 2. And we just went through this the other day uh, with Joshua 1, 8, right? The, the word of God on your mind we, our, our mind and our brain, what we take in, what we see, what we hear from the world is changing our perceptions, changing the way we see and view and uh, do all these things, which is why I have a standard policy. I don't pay attention to the news at all, whatsoever, zero, zip, zilch, because I don't want anything as far as an outside influence to change my mind away from the things of God and what he has for me in my life. So I'm gonna dedicate every single intention I have to thinking about uh, his word and what his word is speaking to me to go out in my life and do and help with other people around me. So uh, it's just so inspirational. I absolutely love this verse. Let's go ahead and jump into our workout. Remember you guys, uh, these are the tools that you need. If you don't have some of these tools, that's fine. Do your best. Uh, to work your way into this workout, okay? Warm up. All right, good warm ups. Remember, get those shoulders going. Um, right, small circles, just get the arms going. I know Marsha's already done like a hundred of these. She got Pretty a little. Pretty much got my workout. She, warm she, up done. <laughs> She's already started working out through the warm up. <laughs> Okay, small circles backwards, then we'll go into large circles forward, then backward. Right? Just trying to get those shoulder joints really warmed up, get the blood flow going to them, the tissue, uh, you know, able to contract, relax through that sequence. We're also lubricating joints, so it's called synovial fluid uh, in those synovial joints like uh, the shoulder, the knees, the hips, uh, wrists, all of those need that fluid moving to it. So the more we move that tissue, right, the more it brings that fluid into um, our joints. And that's really what we want, okay? And remember, just do what you've got for range of motion, right? You might be restricted a little bit. Don't force yourself to do something that's uh, pushing beyond your means or your limits. Right? Make sure that you stay in good control. Internal external rotations. Make sure you pull your shoulder blades. Pinch a marker between your shoulder blades and then you can roll them forward, right? Right now with the warm up, we want to feel the different positions of the shoulder blades, right? What positions can those get into? How can we move them uh, back and forth, creating uh, more activation, right? Because when we get set into uh, our legs, we want to be able to stabilize those shoulders and pinch and hold them in position, again, while we keep that core tight. Okay, good march. Take a Pick a tempo that's going to help Kind of increase your heart rate just a bit. <coughs> okay, we want to get that blood flow really going, working through it, okay? Get those legs pumping. Get the blood flow moving. So. Yahoo! Because if your blood's not flowing, that's a sad day, because I would never see you again. <laughs> Very good. Okay, remember, same thing here with those hips, kind of like the shoulders, right? We're not going huge. We're not going to go outside of range of motion that we have. I want you to make sure that you're uh, just lubricating that joint, right? Just by greasing, greasing the joints. Get that synovial fluid going. Okay, switch legs. 
Nice leg swings. Nice and easy. Again, you don't have to force a giant move. Just let that joint be loose. And good morning, Gail. I didn't forget about you. So happy you could join in, be here for our leg day. And remember, stay weird. Ha. It's funny, I, I think I hear at least once a day, Dad, you're so weird. <laughs> Ah, uh, but I love student drop-off. It is like the absolute best. So every kid, as soon as they get out of the car, I say, oh, oh hold on, hold on a second. So like they're standing outside of the car with the door open, and I go, I love you! As loud as you can. As loud as I can. And then they just look at me and smile and then shut the door. And I just think, you know, how cool. What an opportunity for my kiddos. Uh, to just have that joy, that love spoken over them through the day, and they're sitting there going, man, my dad is nuts. But just to have that walking through the door. I mean, I remember... Other kids would like to have something One, to get right. ready to squat. And, I mean, just the endorphins, the, you know, everything that happens psychologically at that point now is an encouragement for the rest of the day. It's just so cool to me. All right, squats. Rip the floor apart. One. Okay, Squat. rip the floor apart. I want your feet driving outward. So it's not just the knees. So like uh, with me with the band around my knees, right? I'm trying to keep my knees out, but even more so the whole time, even before I sit down, I'm ripping the floor apart. You want pressure on the outsides That's of your shoes? Right. Go down, knees out, hold, squeeze your butt cheeks together tight and pinch, right? Pinch that penny between the butt cheeks. I don't ever want you to finish a squat where you stand up and you're here, right? We're not gonna be half bent Three, over. I want two, you all the way up one. and tuck Transition your to butt cheeks step nice step and tight. Single leg step down or a step up, right? Or you can do single leg balance, right? Just balance on one leg until halfway. Uh, uh, no, it's not Three, halfway, right? Two, Each one. one is its own single exercise, down. okay? So each leg will go the entire time to the three, two, one. Okay, so you don't have to switch halfway. Okay, or you could be doing single leg uh, RDLs. So that's like Jacob over here, right? But your body, we're trying to keep everything we've learned thus far, right? So Monday was core, Tuesday, shoulders, Wednesday, legs. So core and shoulders should stay in place through this whole movement. So core tight, abs, 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 compress, your core. It's not just squeeze, it's compress and hold, right? So we don't want the ribs and hips Three, to be shifting two, back and forth all one, wonky. Switch sides. sides. Not that that's a movement we shouldn't have, but it's just as we're creating loaded movement, especially if we're adding weight, if we're going through these positions, we don't Three, want a weak two, uh, one, core, right? Single leg step, step down. Because a really fun dance I know is a salsa. And salsa, you got to swing those hips. I'm sure everyone loves that visual. Shay's hips going crazy. <laughs> Stay weird. That's halfway. Right. Again, remember, butt cheeks tight. Pinch the penny between the cheeks. You're pushing your foot through the floor really hard. Okay, so think like steps, right? If I'm going up steps, I want to activate my leg squeeze the knee tight pinch the butt Three, cheeks right two, and step down one transition to good morning okay here we go good mornings okay so think uh the the edge of my screen here uh is my wall right i want to be pushing my butt back Three, to the wall two, okay one. so good more morning. than more than chest to floor right more than chest to floor mean dropping down I want to actually straighten that spine, keep those shoulders in place, push my butt back, right? And the more straight your knees are, the more you're going to feel this in the hamstrings. That's part of what we want, the back of those legs to That's really awesome. get a stretch on it and then contract the whole posterior chain. Posterior just means backside, hamstrings, glutes, squeeze them and stand up tall. Again, finish by tucking your butt cheeks and pinching that penny as hard as you can. 
3, 2, 1. Transition to Monster 1. Okay, here we go. Monster Watts. One. Monster Watt. Okay, so band around the knees. If you happen to be valgus, if your knees collapse in, we call that valgus, uh, if your knees go in towards each other or knock knee, you want the band at your knees so you can force those knees to come out. Uh, if you don't have a problem That's with that, you can way. put the band around the ankles and it's gonna be a little more challenging because now uh, the resistance is further down on the lever, right? So the longer the lever, the more torque it places. So we're gonna place a lot more torque in those hips by putting it around the ankles. Okay, but again, core compressed, re-squeeze. Transition to VMO awesome. left. Okay, VMOs, you can either do this in a chair, standing up, uh, or with a band. Okay, I'll move myself out of the way so you guys can see old Jacob doing some band work here, right? So uh, as he as he's doing this, right, you can watch down on his foot. He's going to be peeling that toe off the ground and straightening the knee. So whether you're doing this in a chair or standing up like me or uh, banded like Jacob, either way, you need to be compressing that knee nice and tight and pull the toes up. You're thinking, push the heel away and That's get exactly. that tight as far as the front of the quad. Again, it's not a kick. I'm not trying to just kick up. I want to be more focused on the squeeze of the quad, okay? If just above your knee starts to cramp, you're probably doing it right. Three, two, one. How about that for a Transition to the MO right. Make sure it sucks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Other leg. Two, one, DMO right. Okay, same thing. Push the heel into the ground, toes go up and straighten that knee, right? Again, above the knee, the quad, upper leg should be super, super tight. Squeezing, straightening your knee as hard as you can. Remember, if you happen to have That's knee issues, uh, I'm missing an ACL, so uh, sometimes my knee uh, decides to say no. I'm not going to activate the way I want to. Uh, I'll just sit on the edge of a chair with my leg straight and just pump my kneecap a little bit, right? Just force that muscle to get tight, just kind of squeeze it. I'm not going to do any lifts, anything like that. So that can be helpful as well. To hamstring curl. Okay, here we go. Hamstring curls. Three, two, good, one. tight squeeze. Remember, you can compress that core, squeeze your butt cheeks, sit nice and tall. So all of the principles about posture still hold true, right? Core, shoulders, butt tight. Then we create our movement, right? In this movement, you can bend the knees, pull as hard as we possibly can. The back of those hamstrings should be really firing, almost cramping up on you. Maybe not almost, but actually get them to cramp. I would be kind of excited about that. Of course I would be. Why wouldn't Shay be excited if my muscles go really tight? <laughs> Three, two, awesome. one, long rest. All right, very, very good work. First round done. That's basically our round warm up, right? So we got three more rounds to go through. Uh, every single round, we need to be very diligently thinking, how do I get my butt tighter, right? So we want to take and apply the whole principle of the crushed penny. This is the crushed penny principle, very scientific deal. Your butt should make one of these, right? Take a penny, flatten it out, put a little Donald Duck stamp on there, and call it good, okay? But that needs to be every single move. Right? Every single exercise. Squeeze, re squeeze. Okay? Three, two, one. Get ready to squat. Now, in these 15 seconds, squeeze your core. See what it feels like to compress. Hold tight. Firm squeeze. Squeeze your butt. Right? Pull those shoulders back. Make sure everything's working. Make sure everything's firing. Three, okay? Here we go. Two, one. Squat. Yeah. Good. Again, before you ever start, core tight, shoulders down and back. 
squeeze your feet apart, right? Or separate the floor. I like to think like I'm standing on a newspaper. I wanna rip that newspaper apart with my feet, just pushing straight up, okay? Not just the toes, not just the heels, but both. That's halfway. Rip the floor apart. You're gonna find that your hips activate so much more when we go through this as far as a position uh, to grow and make the hips work the way that they're supposed to. That is a big dowel. Three. Kind of think Micah needs one of those because then they can just knock him over. To single leg step down. So if you don't know, Micah uh, is our son. He has uh, Down syndrome and autism. He's actually a flight risk. Uh, so we have alarms on our doors. We try to lock Three, things up. Two, I mean, it's kind of one, a scary deal. Single oh, leg step down. down. But I've thought multiple times, you know, maybe we get a really big um, dog uh, as a service dog and their only job is to watch the doors that Micah goes to, and if they he goes to open the door, they just lean against the door and knock him over. <laughs> like, just don't let him go out the doors. Um, but then he would have his own little personal pooch. That would be a big I mean, it would be a big move. It, it really is difficult for us. I mean, especially like if companies coming in and out of the house, which for our house is very often, right? We are very committed to having an open door. Come over. Switch, Switch sides. sides. All right, other side. Remember, you can also do lunges here. Uh, Marsha just reminded me, so that's absolutely fantastic. But with lunges, we're going to go one foot forward, one foot back, Three, right? And then two, we're going to one, drop our back knees straight down. to the floor, right? I want to stack my shoulders over my hips, so I'm loading both, pushing anywhere near the floor. Through. Yep, and that's that fine, right? We don't need to go through the floor, right? We don't need the knee to go to the floor, but I want to get to the point of challenge, stay nice and tall, and push up, right? That's so happening. again, squeezing the butt cheeks together. That can be an easy one to forget on, on this one, right? It's easy to think I'm gonna load my quad and load my quad, but really I want to load my hips and hold myself in this position, pinching up, okay? So it's Three, quad two, and but, one. okay? Transition to good morning. Yeah. You know, I got thinking, Marsha, I'm, I'm not so sure um, people online probably appreciate a close-up of the butt and me slapping it. Three, two, one. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Just remember, this is, a, they're probably used to it. You're right about that. Yeah, this is a horizontal movement of the hips. Remember, we don't want to change anything about our spine. So core compress, shoulders down and back, butt to the wall behind you, right? Horizontal movement from the That's hips are going, traveling backwards. So naturally, my chest is going to come to the floor. I'm not going to arch my back, round my back, and reach for the floor, right? So knees nice and straight, core tight, Recompress those shoulders, right? You should be looping this all the time. One. Transition to monster walk. Okay, here we go. Monster walks. And I know this is a difficult position to be in uh, and still try to pinch a pen, right? It can still be really Two. difficult. Right? One. Monster walk. There we go. Good core compression. Squeeze those shoulder blades down and back. Brass nice and tight. That's halfway. Good. Firm, firm, firm. Good squeeze. Core compressed. Shoulders down and back. Go through all these positions again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two. One. Transition awesome. to left. Okay, VMO left. Remember, anytime we do the VMOs, we're thinking straight knee. Again, if you can't get your leg lifted, that's fine. Right? If I need to just kind of pump my knee, sometimes I'll just leave my leg like this, Three, and I'll pump two, the knee, one. try to squeeze this muscle VMO up here. Left. So squeeze tight, and that kneecap should move. Okay? Some of you actually might not have kneecaps if you've had a total joint done. Uh, but we do want to still pull that tendon, right? Yeah. Squeeze that muscle tissue right up top. Good compression. Do your absolute best. That's halfway. All the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Halfway. Again, 
squeeze through, squeeze through. Good compression. Good. Very good. Three, two, awesome. one. Transition to the ammo right. Good job, Gail. Let's stick with it all the way through. Correct. Three, Here we go. Two, one. The ammo right. Good squeeze. Tight, tight, tight. Core compressed. Shoulders down and back. Firm squeeze. Firm squeeze. That's All the way through. Very, very good. Love it, ladies. Keep working through it. Keep working through it. Tight squeeze. Still posture, right? In place. All the way through. Three, two, one. Transition to hamstring curl. Okay, hamstring curls. Remember, same postural position. Shoulder blades down and back. Core compress. Sit tall like a string on the back of your head's pulling you up to the ceiling. Okay, so important. Because you can do that in between um, all day long, right? Every every moment you get to think about that posture, we want to think about that. We want to apply it. We want to force our body to work uh, really well throughout the day, right? It's one thing to do that here while we're doing the exercises. That's halfway. It's a whole other thing to apply that to your everyday life. How can I hold my shoulders in place, my core tight, and squeeze my butt to help me move throughout my entire day? And Gail, I know you've even said that multiple times. Man, I actually think about those things as I'm doing uh, certain things around. So one long rest. Very good. Fantastic, ladies. Go ahead and get a drink of water. That is two rounds down, so we are halfway. Two rounds to go. So remember, do your best. Uh, to control your movements. Again, if you want to go through uh, any sort of training modality, one is neurological control. That's your brain connecting to the muscle tissue. We force that to happen by doing a 4-2-4 four, four tempo. So four seconds going down, hold for two, squeezing the butt cheeks up for four, and then go right back down. So very few reps. Then we can do strength training where we add resistance. We can do uh, Three, cardio training two, where we add repetitions, one. right? Go faster. Ready to squat. The final one would be uh, cardio and strength combined. Do resistance and more repetitions. See what your body can do. The only way we go Three, into that though two, is if we already have the one. neurological control. Squat. Okay, neurological control, the brain connection to the muscle tissue has to be there in order to see uh, better development over time. Right? It's one thing to say, hey, I'm going to start a workout routine, I'm going to get moving, I'm just going to move fast, and I'm going to move hard, but then you get injured. right? So to prevent injury, we go through That's neurological way. control training, uh, force the control center to work really efficiently, and then once you have the efficiency of the movement down, adding resistance is so much easier. Adding repetition is so much easier. It's so much uh, more powerful as far as avoiding pain. Three, two, Very one. good. Transition to single leg step down. Single leg step down. Some of those RDLs. Yeah, like right. it. Anyway. And remember, you don't have to go Three, far, Marsha. But when you go, just one. try to keep your body single leg step step down. straight. And one thing that could be really helpful on single leg RDLs, so like if you're working with Jacob over here, um, is to think like a good morning. You're still pushing that hip backwards. It's just on one leg, right? Reach your butt behind you as your body goes. That's halfway. Goes out, right? So it's not a far movement. You don't have to get parallel with it, but we do want to create a nice tight compression through the backside. So your butt cheeks tight, hamstring pulling you up nice and tall. Three, Very good. Two, one. Switch sides. Awesome. Other side. Good, good, good. Core compressed. Shoulder blades down and back. Single leg step down. 
again, doing your absolute best, okay? So whatever your best is, whether it's slow and controlled, or it's more reps, more resistance, or both, do what you need, right? This is not about me telling you what to do, it's about you knowing, uh, wow, that was really hard to do X. Do more of X, right? Work into it, build strength. Uh, in those areas where we really need it to see change and see progress. Okay. Squeeze nice and tight. Tall and tight. Three, two, one. Transition to good morning. Awesome. Okay, good mornings. Three, two, one. Good morning. Remember, horizontal movement of the hips. Reach your butt backwards. But before you ever start, core tight, shoulders down and back, right? Then just get your hamstrings to the point where you feel a stretch, and then drive all the way up, okay? Push your hips forward, tuck. That's I say tuck the tail, right? It's like if we have a tail, this is sticking my tail up, and this is tucking my tail down. You want to squeeze the butt cheeks, get that tail tucked down. Three, two, one. Transition to monster walk. Okay, monster walks. Three, two, one. Monster walk. Remember, if your knees cave in and they like to be close together, we want the band at your knees to kind of force those knees out, create a good core compression. And then on, move man. through it. Very good. Squeeze nice and tight. That's halfway. Still trying to think. Squeeze the penny between your butt cheeks. Get it nice and tight. Good, good, good. Love it. Transition to VMO left. Okay, VMO, so go ahead and get set. In position, remember, lock your knee, press your heel away from you as far as you can, pulling the toes up, okay? Three, two, one, VMO left. Again, if you cannot feel this in your upper leg, right? If you don't feel it here, just above the knee, we're doing something wrong. Okay, so I want you to think again, straighten your knee. So it's like you're just flicking that knee out nice and straight, press the heel away, pull the toes up. You really should feel that That's in the upper way. quad, okay? Build some strength there. That's what's gonna help those knees. Build some strength through them, okay? Good control. Again, I'm more about control than I am the, the full movement, because without building the control first, the movement won't happen. At least one. Of the ammo right. Here we go. Good, good, good. Four compress, Three, knee two, tight. One. The ammo right. Awesome. Get a nice tight squeeze. Stay tall, That's tight, happening. core compressed, firm squeeze. Again, have that string pull your head up to the ceiling, shoulders down and back. Almost there, ladies, all the way through. Remember, do your best, do your best. Three, two, Very good. One. Transition to hamstring curl. Okay, last one around three. Yahoo. I still remember the first commercials for Yahoo. Three, two, that was awesome. one. Hamstring. Okay, good hamstring pulls. Remember, bend those knees hard, hard, hard. Still implementing shoulders locked down and back. That means this should be tight, okay? Right here, down that back. 
Okay, pull the shoulder down, halfway. hinge up back behind you. Firm and tall seated posture. Think about any person you might see in a restaurant and you go, wow, that person has really good posture. Right? What does that look like? Well, shoot, that looks Three, like not this, two, but this. One. Long rest. Long rest. Last one, then we are done for the day. So get a water break. Remember, if your tolerance maybe is only three rounds, that's fine. Do the three rounds, do them really well. And then we do want you to jump back into some SMR work, right? Because your body, SMR just self-massage, uh, your body uh, is, I say, a series of circus tents, right? So we have all these circus tents that are standing straight up. Uh, not so much what happens on the inside, but if I pull one of the ropes really tight, the whole circus tent is going to lean. Right? So our structure Probably then flat. is imbalanced, right? Mm -hmm. But when I do one. that, if one gets Get really tight, one. the other one is stretching and it's getting really long. So even if I loosen up, say with that self-massage, I need the other 50% is strengthening the mm -hmm. opposite tissue, Two. right? So that's one. why I'm so, uh, so passionate about what we need to do both. You have to do both if we want to restore balance. Yeah, massages might be great, but they're not gonna build strength. Strength might be great, but they're not gonna fix super tight muscles. You combine them together, you're gonna see really good improvement in the way that your body structure holds. That's, halfway. That's what's gonna keep you moving without pain for much longer. And even recovering, right? Because we know uh, whether it's a day with grandkids or outside doing yard work, you do a whole day of that, you're gonna be sore. But what's your recovery look like? Is it four days of pain and soreness? Or is it, hey, it was a day and a half to two Friends days of a single leg step down. Very different. Okay, single leg step down. Remember, do your absolute best through these. Leg tight, butt cheeks, pinching a penny. I want you squishing two, some Donalds here. One, single leg step down. Okay, come up tall, right? Finish every single repetition. Tight butt cheeks, tucking underneath, standing tall. Shoulders down and back. Imagine my hand coming for a belly whack, Boom. right in the stomach, tight, hold That's and control, way. really firm, 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 okay, doing your best all the way through. Awesome, awesome. Three, two, one, switch sides. Good. Okay, switch to the other side. Remember, Three, core compressed, two, squeeze your butt cheeks one, really tight. Single leg step Same down. Same thing, other leg, right? But firmly force it. Uh, one of the things I do like looking at is just like our squats when the knees collapse in, we don't want that to happen uh, on a single leg either, right? So if I'm going to do a single leg squat, I don't want the first thing to be my knee caving inward as I go. I want to force this out by squeezing my butt That's cheek halfway. really tight. Then I can come up off of that single leg. Right? That's what's going to change in a step, a step on a stair, right? It's a step on a stair. I'm going to need to push off of this, holding this out, right? Core compressed. Three, All the way through. Two, one. Transition to good morning. All right, good mornings. Butt goes backwards. Reach for the wall behind you. Touch the wall. Squeeze your butt and Three, your hamstrings two, to stand up tall. One. Good morning. Good morning. And again, nothing should change in the spine. If you happen to be someone who has spondylolisthesis or spondylitis, uh, those, those um, foramen, the holes in your vertebrae where your spinal column runs through, you're gonna feel a lot of shifting and tension in That's there because way. it's basically scraping along your vertebrae. It's getting too tight. So what we wanna do is learn how to brace that spine. Think like a spinal fusion. If we're going to fuse the spine together, we want very little movement, right? But why not do that with the muscles of the body rather than an external application of some sort of mesh or grid? We want to hold that nice and tight for our movement. Then we can still go through movements like a good morning, like our squats.
I definitely have heard two, one, monster walk. No, I've heard uh, or had patients come in, clients come in, and they're saying, "Oh yeah, with my low back, my doctor told me I should never, uh, I should never uh, bend, bend over." I said, "So you never sit down?" That's that way. <laughs> like that is bending. That is the hips. So you must. Like to get in bed, you have to like stand right next to your bed and fall in because it, if you can't bend, right? If you can't move, it's the spine is what they're more concerned about, right? So doctors typically will just say, don't do that, right? Avoid, don't even do the motion. But if we can change the motion, if we can change the way the muscles fire, that's what's gonna give you the stability that your spine needs in order to do it. Okay, good. Core compression, squeeze nice and tight. Three, two, stay one. tall, tall, tall. DMO left. Stay upright, 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 tall, 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 tall. Again, core compress, squeeze those shoulder blades down and back. Firm, firm, firm. And stay tall and tight. Tall and tight. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Up, up, up. Almost Three, there. Two, one. Transition to Good. BMO right. Okay, BMOs on the other side. And again, do your best to get that quad locked in place. Three, Squeeze firm. Two, one, BMO right. Other leg, really tight. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And then do your best. All the way through. That's halfway. All tight, shoulders, core, press, compress, compress, Three, do your best. Two, one, transition to hamstring curl. Good, last one. Powerful hamstring curls. Stay nice Three, and tall. Pull two, those shoulders down one, and back. Hamstring. Again, tall, 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 tall. Core compress, shoulders down and back. Hold it firm, pull through those knees, bend the knees, pull hard. Cramp those hamstrings. Almost there. That's halfway. Doing your best, your best. Tall and tight, core compressed. So you wanna set the table up back there? That'd be great, make sure it's ready to go. Three, two, awesome. one, long rest. Well, hey, isn't that just fantastic? Well, very good work, ladies. Uh, appreciate you being here this morning. Gail, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, we're going to jump into the SMR work, so this is headache, uh, headaches and neck work. Uh, so we want you to work through that, right? Even if you don't have any pain in your body, we want it to be preventative work. So do the work anyway and see what hurts, see what has problems, so that way you can work through it and start seeing that preventative care taking hold. All right. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow for another core day. Uh, excited for that. So we will see you then. As always, I am here to help you move well so you live well. The head, neck, and shoulders are intricately connected by several different muscles. The most superficial muscles being the upper trap, middle trap, and levator scapula. The brain communicates with these muscles through the 11th cranial nerve and the nerves at C3 and C4. These muscles contract the shoulder towards the neck, which causes pressure on the upper part of the vertebrae, creating tension and pain. The muscles that are much deeper are the transversospinalis and splenius capitis.
The nerves that innervate these muscles are found from the C1 through the C6. These muscles connect the head and neck, which means looking down, like reading, computer work, or especially phone or tablet work, can cause problems. Start in a side-lying position with a foam roller between the neck and shoulder. Use your top leg to press into the floor rolling your body up, which will create pressure downward through that shoulder. You're trying to create as much movement between the ear and shoulder as possible while relaxing the head toward the floor. You may increase the intensity of work by rolling the foam roller up and down using your hand. To work different points of the neck, simply roll backwards, keeping the chin and chest directly in line while opening the shoulders to the ceiling. An additional way to create greater intensity is by creating a saw-like motion, pulling the end of the foam roller toward your neck and then relaxing. You need to allow yourself to relax during the saw-like motion to break down the muscle tissue in the upper trap and neck. Continue to change the position, working the areas that are most tender. If you are tensing your body, it is not helping. My recommendation is to continue this work anywhere from two to three minutes on each side before moving on. A common headache that comes through my door is when someone comes in and paints across the forehead the pain that they feel. Commonly, it's also associated to have eye pain with this sort of headache. The muscles typically causing this headache are actually on the back side of the head and they are called the occipital muscles. When the occipitals get extremely tight, they pull on the back of the head over the top of the head, creating the tension and pressure you feel in the forehead. So let's take a look at how to release these muscles to get rid of your headache. Using two lacrosse balls directly on the back of the head and lying on the ground, use a book to elevate the lacrosse balls. You're going to press down into the lacrosse balls and move them around the back of your head until you find the part that is most tender. At this point, you're going to begin pressing your head down into the lacrosse ball as hard as you can tolerate. This pressure should recreate the headache that you commonly feel across your forehead. Continue this pressure for 30 seconds. I will continue to talk you through the 30 seconds here. Do not let up on your pressure. Continue to push as hard as you possibly can in the occipital muscles in the back of your head. Try even increasing the tension and feel the headache. You know you're doing it correctly if you continue to feel the headache the whole time you're on these muscles. And we finish in three, two, one. Wonderful, now we're done with the occipital release. Next, we're going to be working on the atlanoaxial junction and the rest of the cervicals. The first muscles for us to focus on are at the atlantoaxial junction, and they are called the obliquus capitis major, obliquus capitis superior and inferior, and the rectus capitis posterior minor. Once we have worked through those, we will work on the rotatories and the semispinalis cervices. Laying on your back with a book under your head and neck, place the lacrosse balls directly in line with the junction of the head and neck. Once you have the lacrosse balls in that position, tilt the head up and down like you're nodding your head yes. This should cause a contraction of the muscle tissue on top of the lacrosse ball and then a stretch as you look down. Once you've completed the work on that junction, move down a half an inch to the next cervical and continue this process until you have worked your way down the entire neck. Be sure to get a tight contraction tucking the chin, followed by a strong contraction tilting the head back in order for this technique to work. If you get to a point where it feels like one side is worse than the other, you may rotate your head to that side and continue to nod yes. For example, if I had some extra tension on the left side of my neck, I would rotate my head to the left and continue to contract up and down. Remember to do this continuously through the entire neck, rotating to the left or right as needed. Our final release is going to be on the upper and middle trap and levator scapula. These muscles contract the shoulder to the head. This release requires a massage stick and a clear wall. We want to start by locating the trap and levator which holds the shoulder up to the ear. Once located, lean against the wall, allowing the stick to press down into the shoulder. Once you've created that pressure, you can start turning your head down and away from that trap. You'll notice I continue to hold the massage stick with my right hand 
and let the massage stick push my left shoulder down. Continue to create this pressure until your shoulder feels relaxed. 